We cannot just say, God, move me if you can. Now, I want you to go to Acts 4.31. Acts 4.31. It says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were filled, or they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake with the word of God with boldness. Now, when they began to pray, God began to move in that place. There's a lot of things in life that we'll never understand. Is that correct? And you know what? Sometimes I think there's some things in, in the spiritual realm that some people will never understand. But you know, when you're sitting in a church, and that church is where it needs to be, you're going to feel the Holy Spirit. Come on. You're going to feel that Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. When that Holy Spirit begins to nudge people, people need to begin to move. They need to begin to walk in the power of God because God doesn't have to come to church, right? But he chooses. Why? Because he wants his people to grow. Is that correct? He wants his people to be able to have the power of him to go out and do what God's called us to do. Is that right? So we need to learn. When the Holy Spirit in the church is beginning to move, we need to move. We need to stand upon that power. Amen? Now, let's go on down a little bit further. And it says, uh, let me read a little bit of the commentary, or out of the King James, I'm sorry. It says, they had power. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 4.20. 1 Corinthians 4.20. It's so good. Amen? God is so good. 1 Corinthians 4.20. And it says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. There is power. Yes, does God's word have power? Yes. But you can read all day long. You can study the word of God or whatever. But then you, forget it. you better begin to move in that power that God has given you to move in. Amen? Stand strong. No matter what, what enemy comes against you, no devil in hell can bring you down unless you let him bring you down. Like we was talking this morning in Sunday school. All you got to do is say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not allow you or anybody else to bring me down. God has given me power to stand upon his word, and that's what I'm going to do. The reason that we don't have the power of God is because we're not standing on the word of God. Is that right? Now, come on, guys. <laughs> Satan comes along and we allow him to put fear in our hearts do we not because we're afraid of what somebody might think or what somebody might say come on whether it be in the church or outside of the church we get fearful why because we're not sure what people's going to think well you know what we shouldn't care what people think we need to care what god thinks amen because as long as we live a life there is going to be devils in hell that's going to fight us we got to understand, and the closer that we try to move this little church into where God wants it to be, Satan is going to fight this little church even more. Is that not right? So you got to learn, guys, to stand. I'm proud of Sister Sandy for getting up and doing what God told her to do. And I understand that some of you don't understand what she's done because you're either a baby Christian or you don't claim to be a Christian, but you're trying to learn to be one. Amen? But it's in God's Word. If you'll go to the first book of Corinthians, the 12th chapter, read from verse 1 all the way through. And it'll tell you exactly what you just heard a few minutes ago. Okay? But you've got to understand, people does not want to get out of the comfort zone. Because they're afraid of what somebody else might say. You can't do that anymore. Now listen to this. It said he'll put fear in our hearts to where we won't stand in the power of God. God tells us in his word that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Right. Amen. Now go to 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. We got to learn, guys, that nothing can defeat us. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1 7. Now listen to this, guys. First Tim or 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, my bad. 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you're fearful of something, it is nothing but Satan that's yanking you around. Right. Amen? A lot of times we're afraid to face the future. Right. 
But you know, whether we, whether we want to or not, we have to face the future unless God just takes us out of here. Right? Stand strong. God has given us that power because fear is nothing but from the enemy. Amen? It says, but, it says, uh, for God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Power. I've got the power in the name of Jesus. I've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, I will not be defeated. We got that power in the name of the Lord. Come on, guys. You have that power. Begin to sing it. Amen. Whatever you got to do to keep that power. Amen. Man, that is good stuff. Now, if you'll learn and you'll listen to that Holy Spirit, you're going to learn when you listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen that Satan is trying to trip you up. Amen? He's always trying to trip you up from something. Okay? Because why? He does not want you to grow in the Lord. Sister Debbie told me this morning, and I hope she don't mind me using this, but I'm going to use it. She, she can slap me after church if she wants to. But anyway, she said the Lord told her that it's got to be, and I'm putting it in a paraphrasing here, it's got to be less of her and more of him. Is that correct, Sister Deb? See, a lot of times we try to take care of our own business. we got to give all of our business to the Lord. Whether it's ourselves, whether it's our spouse, whether it's our mother, our brother, our sister, whatever the case may be, we have to give it to the Lord. Right? And when we begin to give that to the Lord and begin to stand on his word, then we're going to have power. Amen? And then when we have power, we can overcome all this stuff. Amen? We are overcomers in Christ. Amen? In Christ. Did you hear that? Not in ourselves, but in Christ we can overcome. Amen? Amen, amen. God is so good. Okay. Now, let's go back to, to uh, let's see where I was at. I forgot to write that down. Satan, you didn't win, no. Go back to Acts 4.31, where we read a while ago. Now, you remember, when they were all in prayer, listen to that. <laughs> That's so good. It says, before we can truly have the power of God. Now, this is, uh, this I'm reading this. This is what I wrote. The Lord gave this to me. Before we can truly have the power of God, we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. We can't have just a scotch. Well, let me pray. Let's, we can't have just a little bit because a lot of people don't know what scotch is. Scotch is a, just, just a little bit. A little bit. We can't have and be completely filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. What do we got to do? All the way. Listen to what that says, guys. Now, this is what the Lord had given me. It says, before we can truly have the power of God, we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost, or we will never have the power God says we can have. Amen. Completely filled with the Holy Spirit. So let us do this. I'm going, now, before we go any further, let me, let me read something else to y'all. Let me read this. Let me read this again. It says, when they had prayed, the place were shaken. They were all assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake with the word of God with boldness. Now, I truly believe with all of my heart that God wants every one of us to be filled with his Holy Spirit. Filled up and running over. How do we get there? Well, you heard what that says. They begin to pray. You know, as, as the Bible said, God is always there. It's us that. And God is a gentleman. He's not going to shove himself on you. If you don't want the Lord, then, and then some people say, well, I can never really. I, well, let me put it like this. They'll say, well, I don't really think I could ever get to where God wants me to get. That's Satan telling you that. 
You can on your own, your own. No. But when you begin to ask God, Lord, give me the strength that you told me. We talked about in Sunday school this morning. We talked about God's promises and his blessings upon us. God's promises is the same. God tells us in his word, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he did back then, he'll do today. And if we're here tomorrow, he'll do them tomorrow. But you see, here's the problem. We don't completely trust God with everything that we have. Is that correct? We want to trust him with this or trust him with that or whatever the case. But no, God says, you put your complete trust in me. You stand on my promises and I'll show you. That's the verse that we read earlier. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. What does that mean? Taste and see that the Lord is good. It means that if we'll get in that word and we go to getting hungry for that word, you can literally get, I've gotten so hungry for the word before in my life, in my spiritual walk, that that's all I wanted. I didn't care if I ate. I didn't care if I slept. I didn't care about anything other than getting in that, because it was like a sponge. I was like a sponge. The more I read, the more I wanted. People say, well, that's plum weird. How can you sit and want to? There was nothing for me to sit and read the Word of God four, five, six hours at a time. Now, why? Because I would begin to pray. I'd say, Lord, I would take my Bible, and I still do this every morning. Lord, I'm asking you this morning, when I get into your Word, Lord, that, Lord, that everything that comes out of this Word, that it'll penetrate in my heart. And I'll be able to understand what you're trying to tell me, Lord. And not only understand it, Lord, but I would go out and be a vessel for you and to win souls into your kingdom, Lord. That's what it's all about, guys. Pray. Oh, you don't have to pray that exact prayer, but pray. Lord, I don't understand your word. But here's the thing. God said that he would take the simplest things in this world and conform to things, you know, the people that's got all the knowledge in the world. In other words, he could take a, a banana head like me. Now, think about it, guys. And use you to, to, to stand before kings. Why? Because people think they're so smart. They think they're smarter than God. And you can go to any, you can go to any seminar that you want to go. And you can learn the word of God. But I'm going to tell you something. If you have not been, if you have not been anointed by God, all you have is a degree hanging on your hanging on your thing. And the only way that you're going to be anointed by God is if you get into that word and you get down on your knees and you get a hunger. There was a time in my life that I didn't have a hunger for God. Come on. There's been times that I did and there's been times that I didn't. But with the times that I didn't, I'd say, oh, God, please forgive me. Help me to have that hunger in my life that I would want your word, that I would want your ways. I can't help what everybody else does, but I want to follow your ways. And then what would happen? God might give me a little song. Or he would give me a verse. Or somebody would come along and say, hey, sister. You know what I'm saying? Just the encouragement. You, you know, even if you don't have encouragement in life, God will encourage you. As long as you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you got it going on. Think about it. You got it going on. Now, do I want to ever lose my husband? No. But I'm going to tell you something. You women that don't have a husband or you men that don't got a wife, you got all the time in the world. You got a husband. You got it. You got a friend. You got whatever. Why? Because you're there by yourself and you can pick up that word anytime you want and get at it. Amen. Come on, guys. But let me tell you this, too. For the ones that really don't want to do what God wants you to do, fully dedicate yourself. The Word of God tells us it's better to marry than to burn. Right. Right. Now that come from the Lord. Right. Y'all understand what that means? Get married. Don't shack up. Because right. God will get you. Right. Right. Okay, Lord, I said that now. Let's go. <laughs> but anyway, here's the thing, guys. We come to church. Why do we come to church? We come to church to learn about the things of God where we can go out and tell other people. We can't pacify people sitting on the church pews of the church. Amen? We got to learn that we got to be strong in God to use his power. Don't be weenies. If you got to stand to the devil nose to nose, 
Sad to say, it's pe most people that you love. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Your kids or whatever the case may be. Stand up to that devil. Yes. You can do it in love, but sometimes you have to say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Right. And yes, I am not going to let Satan use you to destroy me. But it says that when they prayed, the place was shaken. Could you imagine that? Be like an earthquake. Can you imagine this church begin to shake? Come on. The Spirit of God. I don't know if any of y'all have ever heard of a woman by the name of Catherine Kuhlman. Okay? She was a woman that way back years ago, years, I think back in the 50s and 60s maybe, I'm not sure. But anyway... She was a homely old gal. In other words, she, didn't, she wasn't fancy at all. She was just who she was. But she told the Lord, she said, Now, Lord, i tell you what I'll do. If you can use me, I'll promise you, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. He did. He took her for a word. She began to pray. She said she began to ask God, What is it, God, that you want me to do? Now, this woman was poor. She had nothing, okay? She said, What is it, Lord, that you want me to do? He said, I'm going to show you. You just be obedient. So anyway, as time went by, God began to open up doors for her. And she began to go into these places. Back, way back in her ministry, she went like into old barns and stuff. And they would set up chairs, and she would preach in these barns, okay? Now you can't. If you ain't got an air-conditioned cushion seat, you ain't going to get people in the church. You understand what I'm saying? Back in the day, we had tent revivals. How many remembers the tent revivals? I told Pastor, I'd love to put a tent out there in the front of the where we out out here and have a big tent revival, see how many would come. We could probably run an eight by eight, be plenty big enough. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get it? Never mind, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, this woman, God began to open up the doors, open up the doors. Well, before it was all said and done, it got to be big auditoriums. She'd go all over the world. They said before she would ever walk out on stage, they said the Holy Spirit would be so strong in that place, it was nothing but a cloud. It's God's Spirit that had covered that auditorium. They said she would never have to lay a hand on anybody. All she would do was speak the word. Now, baby, that's power in this sister. Why? Because she dedicated herself to God. But now let me tell you all the rest of the story. Now, I don't know how many years she'd done that. Now, this is how the enemy works, okay? She'd done it, I guess, for several years. She was very obedient to God. Well, here comes, now she wasn't married or nothing. Well, here comes this man. <clears throat> well, she falls head over heels in love with this man, okay? Well, she winds up marrying this man. Well, I don't know how many months or years it was down the road she finds out he was married to, he had like three wives and several kids <laughs> okay but what had happened was she got she got light on her following the lord she looked at the man more than she looked at god come on down she went now did she get back to where god wanted her to get but she had to go through all of that because she got disobedient. Now, what am I trying to tell you all that for? Because that's how Satan works. The stronger that you try to get into God, the more that devil is going to come along and tempt you, put things in your way that you thought never. Is that right, Sister Kay? But we have to always remember greater that's in me than he is in this world and I can overcome all things through Christ but you see we have to keep focused we've got that power to stay focused we can't you know as we say we have to live in this world everybody has to live in the world but you do not have to partake of the things of the world don't go diddly daddling in stuff that you know better to do well, I don't like to read the Bible. You got a problem. I don't like to pray. Well, you really got a problem. Like I said a while ago, ask God to help you. Help you. Because this flesh, we know, it's
it's weak. It wants to go out and do whatever we want to do. Now, I know I'm not the only one in here that's ever been that way. Come on. You got to understand this, guys. As long as we live a breath of life, we're going to fight the flesh. That's right. God will pull us through if we pull on God. Is that correct? So you want the power of God? Now let's finish reading this scripture. I bet y'all be glad Brother Steve takes back over, huh? Let's see here. And it says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were all assembled together. See, we got to be together in this, guys. We had people leave the church here a while back because uh, Sister Sandy was speaking in tongues one day. And they said, we don't like that. Well, they didn't say that, but we knew that's what they meant. Well, go find your church that you can go to that they don't speak in tongues. I don't know what else to tell you, Sister. So they left the church. But now her husband, he was, they were going to another church. Never mind. I won't say that. Never mind. But anyway, we'll move on. But you see, everybody's got to be in one mind and one accord. You can't believe that you can go out and honky-tonk and do things and come to in his steps. Because old mean Sister Sue is going to say, you go to hell for that. you got to understand. It's like that big sign out there, standing out there in the front of that church. God gave me that about six months ago. He said, I want you to write that down, and I want you to put it on a sign. What did he say? He's scared to come up here? Oh, well, that. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. That, that's right. That is it. Oh, well. But here's the thing. This is really, I'm trying to get to a point. You shut up. Oh, I forgot. I'm in church. I'm in church. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'd be lying if I'm sorry. But anyway, here's the thing. If people in a church, really and truly, if they can't be in the unity, we all have to believe the same. Because if not, you're causing a hindrance in the service. Now, even though a church, now let's say it like this. Even though that you're going to a church, that would be like me going to a church that, that didn't believe in speaking in tongues. Well, let's just say the gifts of the Spirit. And me sitting in that church knowing, well, I wouldn't be in their fold, now would I? It's no different than a person coming here that don't believe in doing that. They need to go to a church that's going to tell them whatever they want to hear. Because I want the body of Christ, and Pastor wants the body of Christ, all of us to be in one mind and one accord. Working on, do we say that we know everything? No. We'll never know it all. But here's the thing. If we're all pulling together, we got to all pull together. Then we can get through this thing. But you can't sit over here and say, well, I don't believe that, or I believe this way. No. We had a lady come up here one time. She told us it was okay that you drank and did everything you want. She got up behind the pulpit. We let her do it. She got, didn't she, Denny? She got up behind the pulpit and says, well, my husband, he, she said, are you telling, of course, it was me again. Imagine that. She said, are you telling me that my husband's going to hell because he drinks beer? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, well, how do you figure that? You're judging him. I said, no, I'm not judging him. I said, the Bible tells us that we don't supposed to be drunkards. It said it in another word, but that's what it means. Well, she got all huffy and puffy. Then there's the same episode, the same day of church. We've had some really church services in this church. Wasn't quite church services, but anyway. But then in the same day, there was a lady came in here, and she was speaking in tongues, and I knew what she was doing outside the church. So I told her she couldn't do that in the middle of church. She got all huffy and puffy and run out. She left. So about three or four years later, I was in Bridge City. Me and Pastor was in Bridge City. We had to go to one of our grandkids something at a school. And I seen that lady standing from about here in there, that bookcase. And I thought, well, is she going to come hit me or what's she going to do? <laughs> here she come, boy. Now, remember, I hadn't seen her in three or four years since she left the church that day. She comes up to me 
and I'll never will forget, she had this little baby on her side. She comes up to me. She grabbed me with baby and all. She said, Sister Sue, you don't know how sorry I am for the things that I said and acted in your church that day. See? But if I would not have stood my ground, see, it would have got these people in church because they knew what she was doing outside this church. And I am not going to let anybody come into a church and say that, you know, this is the way it's going to go. And then they go, out. no. It'll be a cold day in hell. And I don't believe that'll ever happen. Do you, brother? So anyway, back to the unity. That's why I said all that is because we have to be in unity. If you don't like what goes on in this church, you don't have to be here. Nobody told you you had to go. We had a man tell us just what, sweetie, two or three weeks ago, we seen him in Walmart. He said, I seen that, or he said, I was told that y'all have a sign in front of y'all's church that sinners can't come there. I'm thinking, well, how did he get that? He said, because y'all said that if y'all don't want, if you, if you don't want to live the way y'all want them to, us want them to live, it ain't us, it's God, okay, then they can't come there. He said, so you know what we did? Me and another pastor in church come down there and read y'all sign. But I think they still thought we didn't like people, you know, sinners. Because, well, anyway, we won't go there either. But anyway, <coughs> so we just told him, well, brother, that's not what it means at all. Anybody's welcome in our church that wants to change and live for God. That's really what it says. But I said... We don't want people in the church that just think they can come to church and say they've been to church. You know, the sign out there says we're not in it for noses and nickels. It's evident. We don't have many people, and we sure don't have many nickels. <laughs> but that ain't, that's what it's about. God has always supplied the way. I truly believe a lot of times this little church has been a filling station for people. You know, some people come, some people, there's a few stay, but all of them's all been in the mental institution. So, you know, you understand what I'm saying? No. I think Sister Sarah, well, maybe I better leave. <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> but I just had to say that. <laughs> but anyway, here's the point is, but we have to be in unity. And if we really cannot agree, then the power of God is never going to fall in a church the way that he said, you know, that it would. Amen? Now, we're about to close here, Okay. And it goes on and it says, uh, it said they were all assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake with the word of God with boldness. We got to be bold. Ain't that right, Sister Deb? You got to be bold in life because the devil is out there. He wants you to be a weenie. A sissy baby. Cry baby. Poor me. Stand up to that devil. I don't care if you have to stand up to President Trump. Stand up to him. When you know that you know that you know that God is on your side, you can take on the devil, eyeball, eyeball. Stand strong. But the meaning to this scripture here and to, and to this uh, little lesson today is that I know that God wants us all to be filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and to have church services that he wants us to have. So what we're going to do, we're going to have an altar call. And I'm not saying the Spirit of God is not in you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I want all of us to be so full of the Holy Spirit that the power of God will be so strong in this place or wherever we may have to go out into this world that they'll say, man, where do those people go to church at? Come on. I tell you what, now that women's retreat helped me a lot. Y'all ready to go again, girl? No. <laughs> but here's the thing. You've got to push forward. You can't just continue to go week, 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 week. No. We have people. Somebody seen Sister Sandy at Walmart last week. Said She got to talking to them, and she told them that we have church services on Saturday. Well, poor Pastor Steve. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? He says, well, he, he said, that ain't right. He said, that's wrong. I told her, I said, you know what you should have told him, but she didn't think, which that happens to us. I would have said, sir, have you ever really studied on the Sabbath? Have you ever really studied that? And he'd either had said yes or no. And I'd say, well, if he said yes, I'd say, okay, I'll tell you what we'll do with you, brother. We'll meet somewhere, either our church, your church, or 
Dairy Queen, I don't care where we meet at, and I want you to prove to me in God's word, in God's word, not your words, but God's word, where it says that we have to have church on Sundays. Now, that's either going to get him to do what he says that he's flapping his mouth to do, or he's going to exit the door. I said, you have to call their bluff. Call their bluff. I said, because he knows that he can just go around telling people that. No, stand up for what you know is right. I said, when God tells us that we need to have church on Saturdays, we're going to have church on Saturdays. Right? Now, if people, like me and Pastor was talking the other day, it's kind of good to stay at home on Saturdays. I mean, on Sundays. Think about it. Man, you got like Sunday that you can clean your house. and <laughs> Ain't that right, Sister Deb? See, Monday I usually have to clean my house, but Sunday I can clean my house, and everybody else is in church. I'm cleaning my house. Amen? And think about it, too. On Saturdays, your restaurants are not near as busy as they are on Sundays. So if we want to go to the roadhouse after church, you ain't got nine million people you have to face. But that's not the point. The point is, we're going to do because what God tells us to do, whether man likes it or not. Amen? So this is what we're going to do. If you want more of the Holy Spirit in there, again, I'm not telling you that you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life. We can always use more. But before we do that, this is what God's told me to do. If there's anybody in this church that truly don't know the Lord, that doesn't serve the Lord, or has backslidden, come on up here. We're going to re- we're gonna, uh, pray with you. It's nothing to be embarrassed. God tells us in his word. If we're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of us. So if everybody's in the church is where they really need to be, well, then we're fixing to have a Holy Ghost showdown. Amen. We're going to pray that God is going to fill us up with his spirit, that we will have the power to go out and face the devil. Amen. That we won't be weak as kittens, but we'll be as bold as a lion. Amen. So is there anybody in here that needs prayer before we come up here and we're going to pray? Sister, come on, girlfriend. Come on. Amen. Amen. Anybody? There's nothing to be ashamed about. Hey, baby, we've all been there.